and welcome to a special edition of QPTV's News Desk. I'm Rosalind Nieves. And I'm Lucia Dragos. We're going to bring you to a special Memorial Day presentation that not only commemorates our veterans for Memorial Day, but every day. That's right. We're going to take you to the Little Neck Douglaston Memorial Day Parade. The people of New York City have marched on Northern Boulevard from Great Neck to St. Anastasia's Church in Little Neck since 1927 to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice and those who serve our great country to keep us safe. There was some speculation that the parade was not going to happen this year. However, the community gathered together and made it greater than ever. The weather was beautiful and Northern Boulevard was dazzling with displays of patriotism and honor by members of the community. And many legislators came out to pay tribute to the nation's veterans. Take a look. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight are the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Thank you, Michelle, for that beautiful rendition of our national anthem. I'll now introduce Monsignor Anthony Sherman, pastor of St. Anastasia Church, to lead us in the invocation. O God, who has bestowed on us the gift of life, we pray for those who have served our nation and have laid down their lives to protect the very freedoms we so often take for granted. We pray for those who fought and then returned and enriched our country with their talents. We pray for those whose spirits and bodies have been scarred by war. May we never abandon them in their struggle. We pray for those haunted by memories 
who wander in a land strange to us all. We pray for those who serve us now, especially those in harm's way. Protect them from danger and bring them safely home. Source of all reconciliation, we become weary, weary with the absence of peace in our troubled world. Help us all to remain true to the struggle for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Alone, we can do nothing, but with your help, we can achieve that ultimate peace which our hearts so desperately seek. Once again, come to our aid, light the spark of hope, and let us find in you the courage and joy that will last forever and ever. Thank you, Monsignor. Please be seated. Once again, good afternoon and welcome. I'd like to begin by giving a heartfelt thanks to all of those who put so much time and effort into making today such a great success. We had a wonderful parade and have a very nice ceremony planned for this afternoon, none of which would have been possible without your tireless efforts. Thank you. We will begin today's ceremony by recognizing our distinguished guests. And there will be several presentations, and then we'll, we will officially open this beautiful monument to those who have served. To get us started, it is my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Little Neck Douglaston Memorial Day Parade Committee, Charlie McBride and Jay Douglas Montgomery. First thing I want to say is I'm proud of Little Neck and Douglaston and all the people outside that came from out of town to help put this parade on. This was a community effort and Doug and me could not have done it without everybody's help. So everyone here should give themselves an applause. Thank you. And to my right, I should have uh, Jamal Othman, Deputy Director of New York State. Okay, he's not here. Melinda, okay. Terrence Holliday, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Veterans Affairs. Okay. And behind me should be Vince McGowan. Okay. And Sebastian DiNacino, De De Commander of the American Legion Post 103. And to my right, I have Catherine T. Cross, the Gold Star Mother. Captain James Van Tatch, retired USA, the Army, United States Army. And behind on my right is uh, Michael A. LaForge from the uh, principal of uh, Divine Wisdom Catholic Academy. <laughs> Reverend Monsignor Anthony F. Sherman, the pastor of St. Anastasia's Church. And Jerry Inisi, our Man of the Year, past uh, Community Board Chairman. Uh, okay, excuse me. Uh, we have New York State Assemblyman Edward C. Bronstein. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank everybody from the Parade Committee for inviting me here today and giving me an opportunity to participate in the parade. Uh, it was an honor to march uh, and also to be involved in a prayer with such distinguished Grand Marshals. Um, thank you for spending your day with us and, and hanging out. It's kind of, it's been a long day, but the, the community wanted to thank you and we, we appreciate all that the work that you do. Thank you. I, I also want to thank the man of the year, Jerry Ionisi, a longtime chairman of Community Board 11. Jerry's done a lot of work for us over the years and uh, uh, we, we appreciate all that he's done. And, and also, uh, I think we need to recognize the great work that the NYPD did today of organizing this parade. We have uh, Queen, Queen's North Chief Paduri here with us today. And, and, and I also 
So uh, we have to thank uh, Doug Montgomery and Charlie McBride for doing a fantastic job of putting this parade together. There, there was a period there where we weren't sure if the parade was going to go off as usual, uh, but the community stepped up to the plate. plate. This is something that's very important for our community. Uh, you know, since, since America's founding, hundreds of thousands of young men and women have given their lives for, for our freedom and our security and our peace. Uh, and it's important that on Memorial Day, our community uh, recognizes those sacrifices. And to make sure that we recognize those sacrifices, not just one weekend a year, but year round, I also want to thank St. Anastasia's and Divine Wisdom Academy for rededicating the new monument to our, uh, those in the armed services. So, so once again, thank you everybody for participating. I think the, the parade uh, will survive for many years from now. Thank you very much. The event organizers were pleased that they had a great turnout and that so many people pitched in to make sure to continue the 87th year tradition. This year's parade featured five distinguished grand marshals and the ceremony was held at St. Anastasia Schoolyard. Commissioner Terence Holliday of the Mayor's Office on Veterans Affairs gave the proclamation. And now our grand marshals. John McHugh Sr. is, I, I, he, had a, he had left her already. Lieutenant Colonel John W. Pinkerton, U.S. Army, retired. <laughs> Lucy Lassiter Safita. <laughs> Thomas A. Dent. Rocco Moretta. Yeah. Yeah. And Brigadier General William P. Barrage. Yeah. Again, thank you. Thank everybody. I really appreciate you. Little Neck Douglaston Memorial Day Committee would like to present medals and appreciation to our four, five Grand Marshals, four of which are here now. to Brigadier General William P. Uh, P. Barriage for his participation and, and attending and being our honorary Grand Marshal. Please stand and give them a round of applause. The event also featured a special monument Rededication. Just listen. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Terrence Holliday, Commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Veterans Affairs. Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for having me here today. You had a, you have a really great event going on, and thank you for honoring Memorial Day. Um, I'm here for my boss, Mayor Bill De Blasio. Uh, I know he was here earlier today and had an absolutely great time. I was out at Calverton, um, and I want to thank you. Very, this is my mother's church, by the way, too. So um, I was gonna say, before I read this wonderful proclamation, uh, I'm a retired uh, colonel. I see we have some visitors from Fleet Week. Um, they, they need a hand from us. All right. 
and, and we can't forget our Marines in the back. I, I know we have the Army, and I thank you so very much. Okay. And we have the Coast Guard, Coast Guard Auxiliary, right? All right, Sepin Paradas. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to just, I'd like to read a, a portion of this proclamation. Uh, whereas every year on the last Monday of May, families across the five boroughs and around the country gather to honor the brave men and women who gave everything to protect our country. In a long and proud tradition as old as our nation itself, New Yorkers have answered the call of duty fighting to secure not only our freedoms, but also our entire way of life. In the words of Pericles, what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Whereas in deployments around the world, Americans in the military have courageously upheld our country's highest ideals. Their service has strengthened our city, our counties, and our nation. While their patriotism and courage continue to inspire us all, with that same spirit of tenacity, purpose, and grit, let us rededicate ourselves this Memorial Day to those who have made our nation safe. Now therefore, I, Bill de Blasio, Mayor of the City of New York, do hereby proclaim Monday, May 26, 2014, in the City of New York as Little Neck Douglaston Memorial Parade Day. People were thrilled to be a part of this important event. We will now leave you with a patriotic melody performed by the 319th Statue of the Liberty Army Band of Fort Totten. illustration that I did for the United War Veterans Council about six years ago. We use it traditionally every Memorial Day. As a gold star mother, I lost my son while he was on duty in 2002. As an American gold star mother, I'm a member of an 85-year-old organization that serves our veterans and our military communities. Hi, my name is Pat Gualteri and I'm the executive director of the United War Veterans. We produce the New York City Veterans Day Parade and we were sure happy to get a call to come out and help with the Little Lake Douglas Sim Parade. a nation is to support our veterans don't decrease we ask much they give much and we give small returns let's turn it around to compensate what the military does for this country I'm Steve Savarese United War Veterans I'm a US Army veteran and uh, from the Vietnam era also uh, Army uh, Air Force Reserve uh, war on Terror and Desert Storm. Uh, I'm marching here with the Queens Village Republican Club, although I'm a member of the uh, United War Veterans too. Uh, this parade almost didn't happen. Uh, the original organizers uh, disbanded, and through the efforts of the community and the United War Veterans, we're back strong as ever.
My name is Lieutenant Commander Kenneth Goldstein. I served uh, 26 years in the United States Coast Guard. Presently, uh, I work with the outreach program at uh, James J. Peters uh, Medical Center in the uh, Bronx. I work with the outreach program. Uh, we serve uh, our veterans, uh, letting them know that there's uh, medical programs that are available to them. Uh, we offer them all kinds of services, uh, that there is help for uh, veterans that are homeless, that there are jobs that we can offer to them. Uh, Memorial Day, to me, has a lot of meaning that uh, our vets that gave our lives to our country to keep it free, and basically um, that the vets that are standing here today honoring those that had passed and that those that are still serving, that they mean a lot to us and that we haven't forgotten them. I um, have been involved helping out with the veterans for many years. It started when I was only 19, doing two Bob Hope tours, where I used to work on the Dean Martin show as one of the gold diggers and as one of the Dingling sisters. And uh, Bob Hope liked the fact that we were perfect for it at that time for the young GIs, and so we all went. I went for two years and have done other things um, and continued that mission. Good evening, I'm Jim Siegert from Troop 183, uh, sponsored by the Lions Club of Great Neck, Theodore Roosevelt Council, and I just want to say that events like this on Memorial Day are something that just shows how much we're involved in the community. I want to say that scouting, out of all the things we do, camping, community service, environmental projects really teaches the boys one thing and I think one important thing and that's leadership. Thank you for joining us. That's it for today's show. If you'd like more information on how you can participate for 2015 Memorial Day Parade, just call 718-279-3200. If you miss any part of this program, just go to our website to view the entire show at qptv.org. Thank you. Queens Public Television is a private, not-for-profit organization that serves the residents of Queens and other not-for-profit organizations with 501c3 status. In 1982, QPTV made its entrance on the national stage of community television. Since our inception, we have trained thousands of residents and cable cast over 90,000 programs. For over 31 years, QPTV has advocated and supported media of the people, by the people, and for the people. Queens, New York is the most diverse community in the world. Over 200 languages and dialects are spoken right here. Every race, creed, culture, religion, and political point of view can be found not only in this community, but also on our four channels. QPTV is democracy in action. We are committed to assisting everyone in this community to exercise their First Amendment right to free expression. The content creator, the performer, or entertainer can be any age. However, the certified producer, Queen's resident, or sponsor must be 18 years of age or older to sign a channel user contract or take courses at QPTV. Our slogan at QPTV is Watch, Learn, Create. 
Watch our diverse programming on Time Warner, RCN, and Verizon Fios. Learn the art and craft of television production through one of our workshops. Create, become a QPTV provider, and give us your content to air on QPTV's channels. The question is, how has QPTV been able to reach the community for over 31 years? And here's how we do it. Public service announcements and bulletin board services for any Queens not-for-profit organization with 501c3 status, like the YMCA. Opportunities for a better tomorrow, Human Growth Foundation, and Variety Boys and Girls Club of Queens. Grant aid assistance based upon financial or technical need for Queens not-for-profit organizations, like Queensboro and your college sports. Queens Council on the Arts events and award-winning program Imagination Can Come True. Other grant aid programs created to educate the community and in respond to their concerns, such as the award-winning series Circle of Life and Understanding Mental Illness. Informational talk shows that are oriented towards the challenges that the community faces today. Queen's Update, Coping with Tragedy, Political Debates, and award-winning programs like a live town hall meeting, Bullying in America, and Multicultural Guitar. Educational Tours. QPTV opens its doors to journalists and visitors as part of the International Visitors Leadership Program, as well as various organizations and schools to provide insight into television production. News Desk, a magazine-style program featuring diverse individual stories. The Learning Tree Multicultural School, Blissful Bedrooms, Sports Update, and Children's Bike Race. Access producers, many of whom provide coverage of general content while others cover special interest topics. Caribbean Classroom, Power Tools for Life, Education, and India Talks. Training, QPTV offers editing, field, and studio production workshops for Queens residents and members of not-for-profit organizations that are interested in becoming media creators. The classes are 10 weeks long and meet once a week for three hours with a nominal fee of $85. If you want to know more about QPTV, visit our website at www.qptv.org. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.